All right, here we go. Basic training part two. So what happens is, you know, you get on this plane and they get you on the plane pretty quick because they don't want you going home and screwing up or smoking weed or doing some stupid stuff. So they get you on the plane pretty quick after MEPS, after Dr. Ruth fondles your balls for a little while. Um, so you're on there and you start to notice something as you're going because I made, I made a couple stops. So we went from Atlanta. We kind of gathered and... and then we went to St. Louis, and then we flew to San Antonio. San Antonio is where uh, Air Force Base training is. So you sort of notice something is when you're getting in and you're gathering at the terminal, um, there's a lot of people, a lot of guys who are the same age as you. So you start to like, you know, talking with them, you start to realize, okay, hey, we're all going to the same place. And then it gets even bigger. So it becomes kind of a, a dude party. You know, you start yucking it up and, and you're having a good time and... We had a great time. We had a great time in the terminal. We had a great time on the flight. Uh, St. Louis, we had a great time. And then we get to the thing. Uh, we get to San Antonio, and we're still having a good time. Getting on these Air Force buses, and, and um, they take us to a processing station, which is, you know, they bring all the new people in. And you're given a tiny, tiny little slip of paper. It's about the, half the size of a, of a fortune cookie fortune. And it says something on it. It says... Um, squadron in flight so i was at the 320th um flight 445 and i still i think i still have that tiny little piece of paper somewhere because uh, you know it's the first thing that they give you in, in base trans your first sort of official piece of paper oh my god you don't realize how important that stupid little piece of paper is i saw three people lose their little piece of paper so they got to their flight, they knew, or they got to their squadron. They knew what squadron they were going to, but they didn't know what flight because they had crumpled up or lost that piece of paper. Oh man, that was, yeah, that, that was a huge problem for them. <laughs> so, um, so you're going there and you're, you're moving, the closer you get to your squadron, it kind of like, you know, it's a bit of fatigue, but it's a bit of like the reality setting in on you. And by the time you're in that bus and it's an actual Air Force driver and it's an actual Air Force bus and and you're going to the squadrons, it is dead silence. You know, the, the party is officially over and um, yeah, you're going somewhere real. You're about to go somewhere very, very real. Uh, now, the bus pulls up to the squadron and... My recruiter, my recruiter didn't give me a whole lot of advice. You know, he, he I mean, he knew I was going to, I guess he kind of knew I was going to make it. Because for me, when I went to basic training, you know, you, you, the, there's, a, there's a saying, you know, failure is not an option. And it's a little cliche, but when I went into basic training, that was sort of, it wasn't a decision. That was just the natural order of things is, is failure was not an option. And I didn't have to think about it. It was just like, okay this is the process, just you're going through it, you're getting trained. And there was no going back. You know, there was a lot of people, I had a roommate who went into the Navy and like three or four weeks into it, he decided that it wasn't for him. So it was an option. Failure was an option for him. And then he came back and decided that he was a woman and, and now he's trans. But uh, yeah, the failure wasn't an option for me. So I didn't really get a whole lot of advice, but there were two pieces of advice that my that my recruiter gave me, and I thank him to this day. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, he said, don't be the first dumb son of a bitch off that bus, and don't be the last dumb son of a bitch off that bus. And he knew exactly what he was talking about. So, gung-ho Johnny, first off the bus, you know, he's uh, before the bus even stops, he's standing up. Bus driver says, sit down. So he's like not having it um, already. This dude's like bucking the system, being gung ho. He gets off that bus, three TIs instantly on him. I mean, just in his face, yelling. No one else can get off the bus because they didn't really. They if I they were probably yelling at him before his feet hit the both feet hit the ground. They are on this guy, so they're like yelling. They're like they're like get out of there. I remember they said you don't belong here you're not ready, you're not going to make it, get out of here. And they pointed to the end of the bus, and he kind of stood there for a second, and they were real, that wasn't rhetorical. Uh, they said, they said, go, and they pointed towards the end of the bus. And so this guy, he doesn't, he's, you know, he's 18 years old, he doesn't know what the hell's going on. Um, 
So he starts picking up his bags and trotting towards the end of the bus. Well, there is a T.I. waiting for him at the end of the bus, who, as he gets to the end of the bus, this T.I. steps out, and he goes, he goes, where the hell do you think you're going? You're in, you're, he said, you're in the Air Force now. There is no escape from me. <laughs> He's not, not from the Air Force, not from the military, from me. And, the, oh, man, those three guys, the other two caught up to him, and he got chewed out for being just for being the first person off the bus he got chewed out for a good 15 mi minutes um i did not stick around i heard the last guy getting yelled at i definitely did not stick around to hear what was going on so we all get in line and we get in this shitty formation you know because you're not military you don't really know how to get into formation yet you're not that good at it so uh we get there and and the ti says put your bags down so you know people you know, they're lackadaisley putting their bags down and, and he goes, pick your bags up. So we're like, okay, everybody picks up their bags. You know, dudes are like grabbing backpacks and slinging it over their shoulders and, you know, just, and then he says, put your bags down. We must've done this, putting our bags up and down for a good five minutes. Um, because we didn't realize that he wanted us to put them down at the same time. It's like, he gives the order, put your bags down. Boom, all bags should be down by that time, you know? So we didn't really know it. So we stood so we stood there picking our bags up, putting our bags down. And you don't really it's 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 a really interesting life experience. It should be for everybody, you know, graduating high school, there should be like a version of of basic training. Maybe like a three week version of basic training that everybody can go to, where you go in and for three weeks, you know, you're treated just like mil you, like you are in, in military basic training. And the Air Force, I don't know if the other ba services are different. When you get to the Air Force basic training, you are stripped of every piece of individuality. You're stripped of your, you take, they take your clothes away. Uh, you're going by, a lot of times you're going by just your social security number. You're like... Uh, your first, the first letter of your last name and then the last four of your social. That's who you are for a couple days, probably about a week. That's who you are. Um, but it's a, I think it's a really great experience and I think everybody should try it because as the CEO of my, of my training squadron, um, told me at the end, at the end, you know, he said, he's explained to us and he's talking about it. He said, we, we get here. Well, he was explaining it to the parents who came, you know, to see their kids graduate. He's explaining to them, and he says, the reason we do these things, you know, we we get your son here, we get your, your children here, and uh, your sons, your daughters here, and we, we take away all of their rights. Uh, because that's what they want us to understand what it is the military members are there to defend. You know, that's they take away every single right, every single individuality, every single right that, you know, that you're given in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. They take it all away. And it's really an interesting thing, and it's a really good thing to to understand what life is like without being able to speak unless being spoken to, um, to be the lowest on the on the pecking order. You know, it's, it's a really good thing to, to understand. I really think everybody should, should uh, everybody should have that, under, that understanding. Everybody should either in, if you're American, you should either go to a war-torn country, a socialist country, or basic, or have a period of time where all of your rights that are guaranteed to you by not by the fact that you're alive, but by the by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, you should have all of that taken away so you can understand what that's like. And I really think um, if everybody did that right out of out of high school. I think college socialists and college communists wouldn't be a thing anymore. Uh, but, but yeah, this is basic training. So you get in and it's, it's kind of crazy and, and, um, absolutely chaotic. You don't know what the hell's, you don't know what the hell's coming at you next year. You're, you're what's called a rainbow for a while because you still haven't been given your, your uniforms yet. Uh, so a lot of you are wearing like civilian clothing and, and that's why we call you rainbows, uh, your first couple days of basic training. But, uh, yeah, th those first those first few hours are just an absolute blur. You get in, we got in at about two a.m. and we got yelled at for a good couple of hours, and then finally got some chow. It was weird because we got chow, and then we got 
to go to bed for a couple hours and then we got woken up and that's 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 how it begins man that's the beginning of basic training it's it's a really interesting uh experience those first 48 hours of of living like that and uh you know like i rubbed my nose the wrong way once and i got yelled at for for a good couple of minutes um so that's that's what basic training is like um yeah so i'll go into some of the funnier stories this one this one was a little hit hit home a little bit but uh yeah, when I do when I do the next one, I'll go into some of the funnier stories of the dudes I went through this with, and uh, some of the stuff, the stupid stuff that we got into for a while. But uh, thanks for listening. I know I failed on my. I tried to do 14 straight days of, of new videos. Uh, you know, we we've we've come to the realization that the cat, little my cat, uh, used to be my wife's cat, but he's my he was my cat. Uh, he's been missing for a week and, and we've kind of come to the realization that he's not coming back. We don't know what happened to him, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a big bummer, but, um, thanks for listening and I'll get some more content coming out today. Maybe I'll do a double upload today, but, uh, thank you once again, hit a like, hit a subscribe and, um, yeah, go have a good day. Bye.